Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think we will eventually get some indication on what that dispute was about. Uh, this was a holiday party. Uh, maybe it was called a Christmas party. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's it, so many potential triggers here. It's really unclear. Now you understand why the media is worthless, why the American people look at them, what they really are. They're morons. They're dumb. They're fundamentally aiding and abetting terrorism by denying who did it right from the get-go, even after they know they were Muslims, even after they know there were ties to terrorist groups, even after they know that this was done out of a spiteful hate for anyone except Muslims. They go on and on with the same lies that it was could be workplace violence. Welcome to the show. We have an awful lot to talk about. I invite you to call the Savage Nation at 855-407-282. Uh, when I woke this morning, I woke slowly and got out of bed even more slowly before I went near the computer to see the lies that the media and the president would spew to cover up another Muslim massacre in the United States of America. And all I could think about was... Which executive actions will Donald Trump take to undo the massacre against our freedoms that we are living through being conducted by Hussein Obama? I mean, we've gone from Bonnie and Clyde to Farouk and Tashfin. Maybe they can make a movie about it. Calling Spielberg, calling Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Ratzenberg, who are AWOL in the war on terror. You're afraid to name Muslims. You're afraid to show the Muslim murders. You're quick to point out evil, racist whites, Katzenberg. Maybe you can do a glorification of Farouk and Tashfin. Make them into folk heroes. Maybe you can star some of your Hollywood friends. But let's look at the facts before we get even more emotionally angry. Who was it in the media who said the name before six hours before anyone else? It was I. I gambled and went out on a limb when no one else would. And when I got the information from one of the guys who works on the show, Jim, I said, Jim, can you confirm that name? Where is it from? And he said it's from a Twitter news feed. I said, do you realize if I read this name, it could be a career, a career killer? If I read the name, it could be a career builder. He said, I'm telling you, it's from a Twitter feed. I took the chance because every instinct in me told me this was a terror-related incident, everything in me by what they were saying and what they were implying in the cover-up uh, indicated to me it was another Islamic terror attack in America. And yet here we are sitting the next day when the whole world knows it to be a repeat of Paris on a minor scale, thank God. And the only reason it was a repeat of Paris on a minor scale is because of the brave men in tactical gear who had the guts to have a shootout with these pieces of human trash, these subhumans. Don't you dare glorify them f in front of me. Don't you dare call them a married couple with a baby. They're untermenschen. They're humans. They're humans to who? Humans go into a disabled clinic and shoot people up with automatic weapons? That's subhuman behavior. Malik, a native of Pakistan, who came to the U.S. on a fiancé visa. Did you know that Obama created a fiancé visa to bring in more Muslims at a quicker pace? You didn't know that. You didn't hear that yet on any show? Oh, yeah, there's another one he created. Why you slept, the man with the most demonic eyes in history. I watched Obama speak. I got to tell you, I saw a pure demon sitting in a chair. If I saw a, 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 a monster created by Hollywood and I put those eyes in the monster, they couldn't have been more terrifying. They were blank and monstrous. The monster created another way to get in more of them. Malik, a native of Pakistan, came to the U.S. on a fiancé visa and later became a lawful permanent resident. By the way, where is DHS Chief Jed Johnson? Where's Jed Johnson? Why isn't he fired? Why isn't he thrown out on his legal keister? He's failed us again. Here are some other random notes I made early this morning. Forgive me, they were emotional. Point four. Only racial profiling can help prevent the next Muslim terrorist jihad in the U.S. Point number five on the savage pad this morning. 
Why isn't his mosque being investigated for those like him? In France, they closed down four mosques after the latest terror attack. Liberal socialist France closed down the four most radical mosques. Why is there no investigation of the mosque that this animal came from? Why? Well, I'll let you figure it out. Point six, should care be closed down for covering up the slaughter? Because we'll play you some of the care sound bites, and you'll see that they're nothing but a propaganda arm. Seven, I don't know why there's no outrage for the excessive force used by the FBI. Don't Muslim lives matter? Perhaps Farik or Farouk or Freak's hands were up. Maybe Freak's hands were in the air. Maybe Freak Saeed's hands were in the air with his young bride. Maybe they were afraid of the racist police with the tactical gear, and they were running away because they are afraid of the overly militarized police. I mean, don't Muslim lives matter? Maybe their hands were up. Don't shoot. Did the police kill these two Muslims in cold blood? I mean, where is Ayatollah Sharpton on this case, I wrote. Point number eight, Dianne Feinstein, you demagogue, you. AR-15s are banned in California as a result of your actions. Where did Farouk the Fruit, the Freak, the Fruk, where did Farouk, where did Farouk the Freak get his AR-15s, Diane? And here's the most pregnant question of the day on the Savage Nation. All day long we were told there were three shooters. I heard it from the beginning to the end. Then I was told one was on the ground and two were escaped in a car. Where is the third shooter? Every eyewitness, every media expert said that there were three shooters. Am I the only one who's not deaf, dumb, and blind in America? I wake up and suddenly there were two shooters and they're dead. Where's the third shooter? I want an answer. It's blank. It's blacked out. Who was the third shooter? You want to talk about that? Where is the third shooter? Don't tell me there were only two. You know and I know there were three. We saw it from the beginning. Where did the third shooter go? Why is nobody in the great media saying, well, initially there were three shooters. How did it become two? Where are they? Well, these are some of the notes I made this morning. Michael Savage reported shooter's name hours before the media was written and published by World Net Daily this morning. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Art. Thank you, Joseph. Some five hours before police publicly identified Sa Saeed Freak as one of the three suspects in the attack Wednesday on a social services facility, that killed at least 14 people. Talk radio host Michael Savage announced Freak's name on the air. Freak was one of the two people shot to death in a gun battle with officers. The other was 27-year-old Freak's wife, Tashfeen Malik, who a family member said was Freak's wife. Savage picked up the suspect's name from a Twitter account that was monitoring a police scanner. Freak, described by co-workers as a devout Muslim, had worked at the San Bernardino County Department of Public Health for five years Basically, as a food inspector. It, by the way, it's about the lowest job you could have in, a, in, a, in, the, in the government. They go into restaurants and look for rat droppings, which is about all he was fit for. After Savage announced Freak as a possible suspect at 4.12 p.m. Pacific Eastern Time, he commented on how recent, how reticent Obama and his Department of Homeland Security is to connect Islam to the ongoing threat of terrorism. Savage put himself in the position of a DHS officer in the wake of the attack during his show Wednesday. He said, hmm, you start piecing things together. Christmas party, Saeed Farouk, hmm, I wonder, I just wonder, am I allowed to even think that? No, you wouldn't say it to your superior, Savage said. Don't even suggest it if you're in the DHS or the FBI. Sit there like a dummy and make believe you don't know. Wait for the geniuses at the top to tell you what to think. Wait until the great president himself gives a speech before you say anything about who possibly could have done this or where they're hiding. That's the opening to the show. The phone number here is 855-400-7282. It's a very sad day in America, not only because of the innocent victims of this Muslim mayhem, but because of the absolute cover-up coming from the rotten fish straight down. There's an old adage, a fish rots from the head down. And this rotten fish is rotting the entire nation. He is dismembering the nation. He is taking the nation apart at every level. Did you see this little story that came out a day after another Muslim jihad attack in America? The day after, meaning today, the fool that they put in the Defense Department, Ash Carter, another fool, another useful stooge, 
has ordered the military to open up all combat jobs to women. That's right. He just announced it the day after another jihad attack in America. He is giving the armed services until January 1 to submit plans to make the historic change. Now, this rebuffs arguments from the Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman that the Marine Corps should be allowed to exclude women from certain frontline combat jobs, citing studies showing that mixed gender units aren't as capable as all male, male units. A senior defense official says all the services will have to begin putting women on frontline duty by April 1. He is dismembering every, every aspect of the United States of America. Everything in America that is good, sound, and protective is being destroyed by one demonic Caesar. I can't even mention his name anymore. I can't even mention his name anymore. It's so apparent to me who he is. It's so apparent to me what he is. It's so apparent to me who he works for that I don't even have to say it anymore because I'd only be repeating what I've written in my two last books. I wrote and stopped the coming civil war. I gave you 300 and some odd pages referenced. Every statement I made was referenced. Going back to the original site, to the original article. In Government Zero, I tried like Paul Revere to warn you what was coming. Many of you, eh, you figure what the heck. I don't need to know it. He doesn't know what he's talking about or I heard it all before. No, you haven't heard it all before. No, you haven't heard it all before. You have no idea what he plans next. I do, because I study these things. I lay it out chapter by chapter, verse by verse, statement by statement. But okay, go on with your Christmas plans. Go on with your Christmas plans. Where is the third shooter? Can anyone answer that question? Every eyewitness said that they saw three shooters throughout the entire engagement. Where is the third shooter? Let's take some calls. WABC Lison, Leeson, line five, fire away. Hi, Michael. I just wanted to thank you so much for having the courage to say uh, this man's name on the air. Because I really feel if you didn't do that, the media probably would have worked harder at trying to cover this whole thing up. And it takes the bravery of somebody like you to put the truth out there where you cannot hide it. Well, this is not about bravery anymore. This is about life and death. We are fighting for the last vestiges of our nation. I don't think you know how far this has gone. I don't think you know how bad Obama really is and what he intends to do next. He is behind, not the, of course not behind the terrorist act. That's absurd to even suggest that. That's not what I'm saying. He is permitting this to happen through his enabling this. He's enabling it by not stating, for, stating it for what it is. He won't even call it Islamic terrorism. He said it might be workplace violence. How can a nation survive its fools? How is it even possible for a nation to survive a fool whose, whose loyalty itself is questioned by so many intelligent people? This is no longer just a stupid man, because he is by far not a stupid man. This is a very diabolical, diabolical man. So as I say to you, you know, I've been in this country since I was born, obviously. I was born here. I'm the son of an immigrant. I was always taught by my liberal professors to leave the country a better place than the one I found. And I wake up like Rip Van Savage, and I don't see a better place than the one I found. I see a far, far more evil place, a far, far more chaotic place. A far, far more deceit, deceitful place. That's what I see. But ultimately, I see a far, far more dangerous place for the children in this country, all because of one single demonic Caesar. There's nothing more I can say. I'll open it up to you. I have many more facts I want to get to. All the facts of the case. And there's something so wrong with the picture that perhaps you, the American people, will help help us put the pieces together again. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. It is possible that this...